Welcome to episode one of Age of Wonders 4. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the series. I'm uh, really looking forward to presenting this actually. It's something I've been I've been looking forward to. It's a, I, I guess it, it was a pretty well kept secret that they were working on Age of Wonders 4. I didn't know until you know a few months ago and um, and it was something I was wishing for and here it is. We've finally got it. Uh, well for you guys it should be out in a day or two, like a couple of days anyway, maybe half a week I think by the time I actually upload this. I'm, I'm recording this one quite some time ahead of this. This is a, um, a pre-release version of the game that I do actually have, so there will be some changes. The game is incredibly stable, by the way, like even, you know, even with all the testing, there's just little things, you know, they're just finding little things that just aren't quite where they should be or something like that, but overall, this is incredibly stable. Anyway, we're going to be starting with this particular episode and going through playing as Dazder Tacti Rock. Uh, you can see through there, we've actually got like three Chaos uh, affinity and three uh, Empire Materium Affinity is the way that we've sort of started off the game. And so we've actually got like a bit of a mix between Chaos and um, and Empire. Uh, so, sorry, the, yeah, so the, uh, the Materium. Uh, anyway, a new ruler emerges. Explore your surroundings and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choice will shape the new Age of Wonders. So we start off with the Tome of Pyromancy. Now, this is an important one for us to get started with. So we specialize in high, f in, in, in high fire damage by inflicting and exploiting burning, which is what we decided to do. It's just a, a theme that we wanted our dwarves to have uh, when we sort of set that one up. So fire is sacred. It is beginning and the end. It is passion and destruction. It is life and death. Uh, harness the essence of the flame. Watch it bring your enemies to smoldering ruin. Behold the beauty in the ashes as the inferno burns the land. So does it give uh, soil vitality, bringing life in, from destruction where, wherever it spreads. This is from Yaka, self-proclaimed god of fire. There we go. <laughs> so we've got this one here. We are a dwarfkin. We did this one in the last episode. We're industrious. So we start with uh, production income. And um, so through bolstering, units get sturdier as they get hit in battle. Uh, we've got uh, scout prospecting as well. So our scouts can go and actually prospect and look for, look for different things. Uh, bulwark, so encourages a slow and steady play style, which I like. I'm a bit of a totaler, and so that's going to work in well for us. Uh, runesmiths, back and through here. So unit enchantment research costs um, less knowledge. The unit enchantment co themselves have got less upkeep, and that is critical in the game. It's one th the one thing I've mentioned in the last episode I'm not very comfortable with with the game. It's the one. It's the only aspect that I, I wish was different. Um, so I will be looking for mods that sort of address that at some point, I think, if the game itself doesn't actually sort of address that. It's, it, it, it's done it before in the past. Like with Planet 4, they brought out a couple of really big uh, updates like sometime after the after launch. So this is not something I'm expecting to sort of see in the short term, but I am hopeful that the the um, the unit upkeep is handled a bit differently. Uh, it's just complex, a bit bit too complicated. Uh, start with an extra shield unit or polearm unit. That's great. So we start off with it, with extra forces back and through this side. Underground adaptation, so that we can actually then build on the actual cavern floor, uh, which is where we're going to start. Uh, so we and then we've got prolific swarmers in through here, where we get even less unit upkeep, which is great. And tier one units have plus one rank, so we're going to get some fairly meaty units right from the very very start of the game. So let's just go and and allow that one to go forward. Now, our starting magic, uh, and this is sort of randomly chosen from the Tome, from the Tome of Pyromancy. So we've got like uh, the ones that we started with was, is Ignite. I think it's random. I'm not sure if it's, they, sometimes it does seem a bit the same. So this is skill level one damage spell. And so we've got sustained, um, sustains 25 fire damage, is in, in inflicts, inflicted with burning, and the ground is set on fire as well. So this one is actually going to, one that actually does create flame. And uh, then we've got bolstering chant through here. So target friendly unit uh, is healed. Now you'll see it's got temporary hit points. This is brilliant the way this works in the game. When you sustain damage in battle and you then heal up in battle, it's only temporary. When you come out of battle, you then actually have got whatever damage you got down to is the, is the, is the health that you then are left with. So you don't heal up properly in battle. But anyway, we'll see that when we get in there. And we also gain two bolstered defense as well. So this is going to help us become even more more um, more meaty with what we actually then go and do. And this one is coming from uh, the industrious area. So from the industrious um, part of it. And then this one here is coming from the Tome of Pyromancy that we see back in through this side. Anyway, let's go and uh, click on OK. 
And here we are. We're here at the start of the actual game itself. Okay, so where to start? Where to start? Let's just go through the uh, user interface in, in basic terms. So we've got, for example, up through here, we've got our knowledge. Now, the knowledge is important because what that's going to then do is give us the research. The research is going to give us the tomes, the tomes of those books that we sort of then get to choose from. And so the more knowledge we have, the faster we then move through the actual tomes. And that gives us a lot of power. So that's, that's very, very important that we sort of keep the knowledge up wherever possible. Uh, the next one over through here is Imperium. Now Imperium is something that we can spend in all sorts of different ways. When I was first looking at the game, before I started to actually sort of play the game, I thought that this actually was more constrained with what you ended up doing with it. But it's actually, it really does, like don't be scared of spending it where you need to spend it. Uh, you can see the cost of founding a new city is 200. Now we want to be doing that pretty early on. So we want, we need to be to getting ready to um, to form a new city probably within the first six turns or so uh, would be sort of where I'd be sort of advising people to do that one. And then probably again, like a, 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 like get a third city again fairly soon after that if if you've got the space available. And by the, you know, when, when you have a look at it, make that evaluation and then sort of go from there. Uh, now we've also then got the um, the next one across here is our Whispering Stones. These are really important uh, for when you've got like free cities. And again, sometimes the map won't really be good for that. And other times you'll be wanting to get as many of these as possible. And so you'll be wanting to sort of try to try to acquire more Whispering Stones, but sometimes you just won't. And that will be depending on the game itself. And then this is the actual number of cities that we actually have. So this is our um, our uh, the number of cities you can control without suffering economic penalties. Now we don't want to be suffering any economic penalties, and so um, getting getting three cities that we control, and that by that I mean we actually rule, will be important. But then we anything else above that, and again we can we can spend the Imperium. We can go and click on here, for example. Actually, I can't click on that one just yet. I will be able to soon. But the Imperium. This is the Empire development. Oh, sorry, unavailable for two turns. Then we're going to be able to make use of it. But we can ultimately expand this through, uh, th you know, through th essentially through the game. The game will then allow us to uh, to to build more and more cities as required, uh, if we need to. But the vassal cities that we get don't actually come off that particular amount. So the free cities that we come across, you may want to just vassalize them and uh, just leave them as vassals and then just build your own cities. It's entirely up to you. There's a lot of choice. A lot of aspects you can do in the actual game itself. Uh, as we come across, we then got the gold. So that this is our gold income. Uh, we do this is you've never got enough gold in the game, so you're always wanting to be getting more and more gold, and you never have enough mana. So you want to be getting more and more mana as well. So just be aware these are the basic resources. Over through here are your map casting points. So your basic world map. You also have another set for combat as well, and it's quite interesting the way that that works. It's not like the old game. So we'll come back to that one. You can see there, it's a total of 30. You've got a base of, of 25. And the Tome of Pyromancy gave us another five. So we've actually got like a, a total world, uh, world map casting points of 30 at this point in time. It's not critical, but it does sort of speed up how fast you can actually then go and cast the spells uh, as opposed to the actual research, which I think the knowledge to a large degree, more so than the casting points, is, is actually important just because it does allow you to get through that research fairly fairly well. Over through here, we've got our two affinities. We've got the, the Chaos affinity and the um, Materium affinity. And we, we can chop and change these a little bit. Not We can't change them back, but we can add different affinities. If we're looking for something very particular, we can actually go and chase that one down if we're wanting to. Now, I won't be min-maxing to that degree. I'll be just going through with what feels right for me at the time. And so I'll be probably just making choices based on what's presented, more so than actually trying to plan ahead. Um, Encyclopedia we saw in the last episode, and then there's the menu back and through there. This one here is just show or hide the mini map. Uh, this one here is to uh, go to the economic overview, which then sort of just gives you a bit of a feel for what's around with the different provinces. There's other ways of bringing that up, sort of, so I tend not to really use that one too much. This is just going to switch between the, the world map layers, so it's above world, that's below world. There's something there, it looks like there's a um, a watchtower directly above where we actually are. It happens to be just of our um, you know, gem keep. Looks like it sort of uh, poked its way up through the through the top maybe at some point. <laughs> anyway, that's directly above us. 
Uh, what else have we got down through here? We've got our actual main character down through here. So it just gives us a bit of a summary as to all the different things we actually have, like the race name. And again, if we hover over any of these things, it's just going to give us the, the, the background of this particular faction that we had created. So it's all sort of in there. Uh, this is actually our spells. So we can actually go and click on this one to then see if there's any strategic spells we can go and cast. If we've got any active spells, they'll be in there. And any spells we can then cast in combat will then be listed in here, which of course we can't cast right now. So that's our spell casting. Uh, the turn number in through there, this is actually our alignment. We start off as neutral. Now some some of your starts you'll start off as evil, some of them you start off as good. Uh, again, you don't have to stay there. It often depends on who you meet, um, what comes up in the world, <laughs> things like that. By the way, the more the more uh, other factions you play against on the world, it gets really, really quite intricate the diplomacy in the game so there's actually a lot of things where there's often big fragmentations uh once once the actual wars get started so it's quite an interesting game to play very very different than what the old age of wonders has ever been before uh, this is the end turn button which we don't want to look at this is actually the event log so we've just got we need to actually set our production in uh, in gem keep that's what we need to sort of go and, and do uh, so we'll have we'll go and do that one. That's actually quite nice. I haven't seen that little summary there before. That just gives me a summary of the actual uh, of Gem Keep itself. You know what it's producing and what it's got sort of natively. We'll just close that one. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we've got two two lots of orders for the different units that we actually have through here. Uh, now I'll talk. I think I might talk about Gem Keep itself first. So let's just go and set the production for Gem Keep. Now if we go and click on this one. It opens up the actual stra the everything for the game itself, and it starts off because we've got to set up our production. It says, "Okay, look, what do you want to? How do you want to sort of operate this? You know, like, what do you want to start by building? You know, there's different things we can do, and you can see there. There's a knowledge building there, a library, give us ten knowledge. There's a, um, a mana building that give us ten mana. So this is the library, the shrine. Uh, we don't actually have enough. It, like, it requires three population to unlock this one, and so this is actually to take it to the next level of town. And so the town hall is got a. Um, is, there's no, there's no overriding um, sort of uh, overview of the actual of the, how this all strings together. I'm guessing that at some point somebody will create like a guide that shows all that. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's done uh, pretty quickly after launch. I would imagine. Um, in fact, it's probably a good idea to do that. Um, I might. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be, it should be hard. To, it'd be a lot of work to do it. But I'm, if, if I have done it have a look in the description and just see if I've actually got something that, that shows that because, um, yeah, actually maybe it wouldn't be that bad. I mean, if I press F1, sorry, I'll just have a, I mean, it, it, it's all listed. It's just how it sort of strings together. So maybe I'll, I might even have a look at trying to do something like that myself uh, and uh, sort of create like a chart, which I'll um, have available in my coffee.com store. If I've done it, I may not have done it. <laughs> but if I have, it'll be there. Uh, but, oh, sorry, I'll just go back in. Gem Keep, if we go through and, and select the production, it brings up this production, the build structure production straight away. Now, which which way do you want to go with this? It really like you've got production in through there. If you get where you get draft and production, so you can build faster. Uh, you've got growth in through here, which is going to give you a little bit of um, production as well as food income. Food gives you your actual population growth, so that's vitally important. That's probably the one I would start with if if, if there's nothing that really presents itself. Some of your starts you'll actually start off differently, and you'll have different opportunities. So. Uh, just be aware. One thing when we hover over this one, for example, the workers' farmstead, you'll sort of see through there, it's got plus five production, which is actually just building production, and plus five food. And the food income is actually how your population grows. Uh, it's fairly simple the way it works, which is good. And it does unlock the grand mill. So this one then does sort of uh, unlock a, a further structure. In fact, if we just go across this one, so the grand mill unlocks then the estate hall, etc., etc. The estate hall unlocks, you know, the farmer's guild, etc. So you've got like all these different sorts of things. Now, when you see the word guild, you can only build one guild in a city. And so this, so you can see only one guild allowed per city. This is your specialization chain, essentially. Anyway, we won't, we'll just come back to where we were back in through here with, the, the, with that one. So be aware that there are like unique type buildings for cities that then dictate essentially what that city is going to specialize in. There's a lot, a lot of nuance that you can do in the cities, like a hell of a lot if you're wanting to, if you're wanting to min-max, but you don't have to. 
Now this one's going to cost me, oops, hang on, where are we? The, this one here is going to cost me 130 production, 60 gold, and it's going to take five turns at this point in time. If I can boost it, and by, by boosting it, I would need to have a forester. So structure that claims the province and expands the domain is a forester. And so if I can boost it, so boosting a city structure reduces its cost by 30%. It actually can be quite substantial. So it, one thing it will do is then it, it will reduce the cost, reduce the time. And so you can start to sort of plan ahead a little bit and think, okay, look, I really want to get, for example, maybe the library. So if we want that one, we need a forester as well. So a forester is required for that one. It's also required for that one. The workshop requires a farm. So if we have a farm built, that's going to then sort of work well with that. Uh, if we go the vendor requires a farm as well. The shrine requires a quarry. So they're the different sorts of boosts that we get. So get used to thinking in terms of what am I going to be wanting to build next and uh, you know what what should I be looking at in terms of boosting things. So if we just go across, we're going to grab the, um, I want to get growth first, so I'm going to go this way here first. So I start by building the workers farmstead that's going to take uh, five turns. Now one thing it doesn't show me is that I can actually go and start to recruit other units. I've got plus 82 gold at this point in time. So let's go across. And we saw there, when we looked at it in last time, you know, the tier one units we have available to us. Where do we want to go? Um, like, do we want to get another anvil guard? Do we want an arbalist or do we want a pioneer? Now, before we get started, what, what are we missing? And let's just go and uh, turn, turn this one off for a second. If we go and have a look, we always start off with the scout unit. So the scout unit always starts off on their, on their own. Now, it may be worthwhile getting a scout unit so we can go and check and see what's around us. Or do we have any weaknesses with what we actually have in through here? And so when we have a look at this one, we're starting off with a, um, with a shield unit. Now, our shield units come in at two levels higher than what we sort of had. They come in at veteran level automatically, which gives them already plus eight um, uh, health, like plus four per, per level. And so they come in already a bit ahead of the game and we we did that one we sort of planned that ahead a little bit with the um with what we had sort of got set up in the actual game for ourselves again the the permutations are exponential like what you can actually do with the actual game and so these are probably our best tier one units initially we already we've already got like two arbalist units now i think we were supposed to get two shield units but i i think that may be a bit of a bug <laughs> I have to try to remember to uh, to explain that one. That may it may be different when you come in. I don't think that was the case. I may be wrong about that, but anyway, we've got two arbalist units, so we don't need another one of those. Uh, we've got ourselves a support unit, so you you pretty much always start off with a support unit, and we do actually come in with a the halberdier unit as well, who is uh, again a, a good. Uh, not as an attack unit, but it's it's not as it's not as sort of uh, as defensive as the anvil guards back in through this side, and then we've got of course our ruler Daz Dur Tacta Rock in through there. So what we'll do is I think we'll bring in another shield unit, and um, and you know that might be sort of what we sort of end up doing. So let's just go back into Gem Keep. We're going to go across into Recruit Unit, and if we don't recruit, what it does do is it, it provides extra food, so it'll generate six food. So it converts 25% of the draft to food if we don't build anything. So we don't don't feel that you have to build stuff. Um, you only want to build what you need to build. So let's go with another anvil guard. Let's just go and do that one. It's going to take four turns to build that one. So there we go. We've got the uh, the anvil guard is being built. The work the workers farmstead is being built. I can also come across to this city information. This is actually worth having a bit of a look at. Now, we can give a Whispering Stone to this one. So give a Whispering Stone to the city. This will passively improve your city stability, which is back over through here. And so at the moment, we're getting the domain is giving us plus 20, and we can go and have another look at the, what this all means. So we've got an, an Ascended Champion, uh, which, is our, which is our main hero, is giving us plus 20 natively. And this is quite important that we keep on top of this one. And we've got city structures down through here. So the Town Hall is giving us plus 10 as well. But as we expand, we're going to then be losing this, um, this ability. Now, if I give the Whispering Stone to the city, this will passively improve your city stability by two per turn up to a maximum bonus of 20. So over 10 turns, it will then improve that stability even more. And if we hover over this one as, as well, city stable, stable, it then sort of shows you the bonuses that you then sort of do get. Now at the moment, we're just stable. Uh, it's gonna take us a fair bit to go from stable into orderly. Now we're at plus 20 at the moment, that's gonna go backwards a little bit. So we get plus 10% production, draft and food income, for example. So if we can get that high, that would be great. 
but it's very hard to do that. Now, to give the Whispering Stone, I could do that if I wanted to, but if I find a free city, I'd much prefer to give it to the free city so we can actually sort of almost then communicate with them and uh, because it's not going to do much. Now, we are the governor of this particular location. We can change different things. Like we've got the, the expansion focus is just on manual. By the way, when you do take over other cities, you may want to just come in and double check that it is on manual and not on balanced income, which is sort of like the default. Um, automate production. You can actually have it so that it actually will just make it all of its own decisions if you want it to. Uh, province is just going to go through. There's no there's no improvements yet and structures. All we have at the moment is, is a town hall level one. We do have our throne here as well. Which And what this one does, it gives us fortification health. This actually means that a siege, for every 10 fortification health that you have, essentially it's a turn of um, of sieging that has to happen before before the city will then start to, before they can attack. Uh, you've got knowledge income, imperium, gold and mana. So the throne is very, very important. Now we've got, so we've got the town center, which is giving us um, plus one hero cap, which is our leader. And we've got the uh, city stability income back and through there as well. We've got draft food and production, the throne we had a look at. Palisade walls give us another 20 fortification health and Ballista towers give us another 10. So our total fortification health in, in our city, if we have a look at this one, is 50. And so you can see there, Ballista towers, Palisade walls and throne. So it's five turns that we've got to come back to the city to go and, and before a siege can then sort of actually take place. So we do, we've got to be careful like that we don't go too far away, but five turns is a lot to be able to then bring an army back just to help, uh, you know, get, get rid of a siege if we have to. Having said that, there's so many different ways to fight in this game that often sieges are not usually where, the way you start. You usually start by raiding the, uh, the areas. It feels so much different than it's ever felt before. It's um, really, really cool the way it does work. Anyway, that's the cities. So we've now done our, what we needed to there. Um, this, uh, the next one is the arcane research that's sort of showing up through the side. Just go and have a look at this one through here. So we've got, it comes from different areas. Now it comes from the tomes that we actually have. And we've only got like a couple of, if we show the tome library, these are the, all the different tomes that we can then sort of have a look at in the future. Um, if we go to uh, my tomes, I've only got the tome of pyromancy is the only one that I actually have. So we've already got Ignite. We've already sort of we started off with that one through there. And then we've got these other sorts of areas that we, that we will eventually get over time, including a Pyromancer. And the Pyromancer will be a level two uh, mage, battle mage unit that we can then start to go and build. So this is particular to this tome. So it will then be added into our mix. Now, we don't actually have a battle mage unit natively with the way that we started off with the game, uh, playing as the industry group but uh, by going with this uh, tome we can then bring one in if we wanting to uh, it's, it's, you know when we when we do the, re the research on it um, fiery arrows we can use that uh, which will be a good one for us to, to grab and searing blades we'll be wanting to get both of those pretty early on I think so we'll just hide the tome library uh, you can see there, there is the Searing Blades, there's the Pyromancer, and there's the Steel Chant Fury. Now, this one comes from the in industry, industrious area of the uh, of the tomes, which we, because we started off with the industry, we do actually have that one. So all friendly units lose all stacks of bolstered defense and bolstered resistance for each stack they lost, they gain strengthened. Now, I don't think I'll worry about this one. These will come back over time. Like, you know, it's a bit of a random pick as to, as to what we actually have. The Pyromancer... Would be nice to have. We're not going to be able to get that until we get to the level two city anyway. Um, it does have fire bolts. You have sixty percent chance to inflict burning for three turns. It would be nice. And flame strike. And ninety percent chance to inflict burning for three turns as well. And this deals damage in a one hex radius. So again, that would be very very nice uh, addition to it to what we could then go and do. Um, Searing blades though. It's going to give us the plus five, plus four fire damage, plus twenty percent damage against targets that are burning. I think we might start off with the with the pyromancer and then look for searing blades later on. So let's go that way. Now, when we actually go back and have a look at the um, at the at the spell casting, you'll see down the bottom there. It's got next tome, four research cycles. We've got four lots of research to do before we then get offered another tome. And the tome can come from anywhere. It doesn't just it's not constrained to what we have. The only thing it does constrain itself to is the level. By the way, um, you'll notice that there's borders around 
certain uh, certain aspects of the actual game itself. And so have a look at these because they, they do actually impact things like this is a buff spell. And so they'll tend to have the same sorts of things. The units or the uh, or the enchantments will have this same sort of look. Uh, and there's one that's sort of look at, got a, a high point, a bit like this one, the high point that shows up in the middle. And they tend to be your actual... The, the the race transformation so they, they do actually have like a you can sort of very quickly if you go back to the tome library and have a quick look through um you know through any of these sorts of things for example uh you'll notice that the the shapes like that one there for example astral blood with the with the pointing up when it's a minor race transformation so you can actually use that just to help a little bit with trying to sort of very quickly navigate your way through uh through the different tomes so rather than actually trying to look at read everything you can just look at the shapes go this looks like a minor transformation it's a world spell but it's still you know a term of teleportation etc 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 anyway so we'll, we'll leave that one there uh we'll just uh, go back and just press escape we'll then sort of take us back out escape again and so we're now in the world a map and we still haven't done anything yet <laughs> we now have the orders let's go and see if we can find uh where the um there, there's usually another same faction as you so in our, in our case it's the uh, forgeborn is the uh, is the is the faction that we actually are or the or the group of, that we are there's usually one of your group somewhere nearby and there's usually some goodies like this one in for, for example got a gold stash in through there uh there's sometimes other ones as well so have a bit of a look around before you do much there's a gold mine back over this way gold vein there's a um a mana node and you see when i hover over it it's still it's connected to our to our local area that one's connected. There's nothing else over in this side by the look section. Now, yes, there is. There's an iron deposit back in through that side. Nothing else showing back up in this other area. So let's go and uh, let's go and start to have a bit of a look. Now we do have a road. Quite often, the road will then sort of show uh, it's the way through to another zone. So we can actually sort of go across to this underground passage. Let's just use our scout. So that will often point the way to where the where the next area actually is. Now we've got ourselves a this is actually a um, a marauder guard in through the site, and we'll we'll do this one probably probably this episode actually probably this episode. We've got a bone wyvern, and we also have a bone golem. It's sort of protecting this particular. Uh, there's a gold vein underneath there, so a large vein of valuable gold. And uh, so anyway, we'll just go into here with this particular one. Because the road doesn't extend any further, let's just go and enter this one. So we'll just go and, uh, and enter, and we're going to come back up. And so again, we're seeing, and this is also another little tip. This has been the same in Age of Wonders for a long, long time. So if you're used to seeing it, you may or may not know, not, not, may or may know what this actually means. In through this side, when you look at a banner, it will like anything that's like a marauder, meaning sort of like a something that's just on the map will have like a skull and crossbones on a black banner now if it's red a red banner or a red skull uh, it means that it's it's moving around so it can actually hunt you down if it's white it means it's protecting that particular zone so just be aware of that um so have a look at the at the banners if there's move if there's an element somewhere like this for example over through here we have a um a pasture but there's something that, that that's got like a little sort of symbol showing that there's something there so we can't see it we're aware of where this is but we don't see what's actually there at the moment with our scout unit we also have this mirror fields which is actually one of the ancient wonders it's only bronze level so we can do that one fairly early on and this one may be a good spot for us to sort of go and pick up an, another another start for another city uh, on the on the over on the over map so we'll just go and uh, just leave that one where that is uh, we can see there's more roads that go off this way, so let's just keep on following this road along. Now there's actually an, a, um, a cartographer. Now in Age of Wonders 3, I used to always not go and grab those, but these often are now not really worth getting, but I might as well go that way and just see what it actually sort of exposes. So this road is still continuing on through a swamp uh, back on the other side. This is looking fairly interesting in terms of being able to sort of settle or we'll have a look down in there as a as a as a new source. What we might do though is we just go back to the orders back through in through here. Now we know that there's another zone that goes off this other way that we didn't have a close look at. Uh, we also don't know what's down this other side. This may there may now one thing you can do is just zoom back a little bit. You can then start to sort of pick and choose a little bit as to where things might open up. So it looks like it's fairly open actually this whole area. It looks like that's the edge of the map right there. 
So we've got some hidden hidden areas which we're going to have to sort of be a bit mindful of. Big hidden area in through there. And so some of these might be worth settling into as well. There's not a hell of a lot in there. And there's, and there's a little bit that sort of extends back down and up and through this other side. Um, we do want to have a bit of a look around. Now we don't have to go and attack things straight away. Like we've got the we still got that, that creature that's actually back over this side. So I could send the, the whole troop that way if I wanted to. Or I can actually just split them up initially and just get them to run off in different directions. Let's just go and do that initially. Just send one of the arbalists back out so we can start to have a bit of a look down this way. I think there's a river that goes that side. Now we don't have anyone that can move very quickly, so they're all moving about the same level. Let's just send another arbalist down along this rock wall. And just sort of see where that one leads. And um, there's no way there's no way through there. There's nothing else in that zone. So let's just move this one across this other side because it looks like it goes around the corner. And uh, we'll just see if we, what else we can pick up along the way. It looks like there might be some a goodie stash in through there. Okay, let's end our turn now. That's all we can really do this particular turn. I am spending a lot longer <laughs> explaining things than what you would normally do in the game. Uh, let's just move across another cartographer now this one also extends off in a different direction let's have a bit of a look in this area uh, and we'll go and settle one of the others back out through this side we'll just bring in our shield unit i'm just i'm not really worrying too much about freeing things up so we've now found a haunted halls location and uh, that location has got um, an underground passage that leads to it now, if we flick up to the top there, we're not going to see what's there, but we know that there's one right below that. And then the Haunted Halls is a silver. This is going to be harder for us to um, to uncover. And there may be a way through, but we just don't know at this stage. Let's continue uh, going around, have a bit of a look around. Yeah, this one does actually open up a little bit. Let's just get one of our units to... Um... Okay, when we see a border like this, this is actually going to be a spawner. And so we may bring everyone back to sort of fight this particular spawner at some point. We want to do that one relatively early, I think, unless it's something that's quite dangerous. Um, okay, so we've then got the orders required back in through this side. Let's go to this one as well. Haunted Halls Sanctuary. That looks like it's almost on top of where the other one was that we had found. Um, let's continue on. There's another, another hut over that side. There's more sort of like fairly difficult units there. A couple of tier three skirmisher type units. And there's another cartographer there. So if we can find, oh, there's a border and it's a colored border. So that's actually the border of, could be Arctica actually, I'm guessing. That's not good for us at all. <laughs> that's a bad start, guys. That's a bad, bad start. Um, if that's the case. Now we've got haunted halls. We're not seeing any other any other cities anywhere. All right, we're going to have to... Um, it's, it's going to be a tricky start for us, I think. Let's go back in and just have a bit of a look and see what we can find. Yep, that's actually more rivers. So we'll come back and deal with that one, but we'll deal with this infestation first. Okay, there's nothing else we can do. We'll just end our turn there. Okay, and that's all we can do. By the way, this rock here can ultimately be uh, be moved. Actually, we do start with um, excavation. We might actually do some of that. Doesn't cost anything. We have to be up next to it. Let's go and excavate some of this stuff just so we can sort of see what's going to go on. Anything that's like this, we can crumble away and, and excavate. Um, so that one's being done. This one here is right on the on the edge. Actually, that one doesn't get to do it. That's interesting. This one does, but there's nothing else to excavate there. But there is down this other side. Um, let's go back. We have to be a little bit careful when we do this. Let's go and open this up. These guys here don't get to do it. So we'll bring this one back now to sort of join up with the rest of that particular group. All right, so orders required. going to show us there's Arctica 
So Arika greets you with contempt. So relations are negative 660. How do you greet? I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to say goodbye. So she's already a long, long further ahead than what we are. So she's got the overall ranking in everything, which we knew that when we started the game. That was, that was what we started with. So she's in a bit of a problem. But we start off at peace with her. Uh, we just have to be very, very careful. So we're just going to go and say goodbye. It's a shame that we started so close to her. Um, it would have been nice not to, to be honest. <laughs> so Realm of the Frost Queen. Yep. So this is the actual the quest. So the, the realm will be ours. We have to defeat her to win the game. Uh, so that's what we have to do. It's going to be very, very hard. So it's not going to happen early. We're going to have to try to just um, probably defend against her, I would guess. It's going to be a, this is going to be a hard, hard game, uh, the way this is going to go. So we, we probably won't build anything on top of the surface. Uh, there we go. So that's the, um, that's, the, that's the quest. That's what we have to then go and do. And I think that's probably a good place for us to leave what we're doing here. Here's more of her. That's actually that's her capital that we've just found through the uh, forest of, re of reflection. Okay, interesting. I think we're going to have to stick underground for a little while and just turtle up. Let's go this way and, and take this um, this location. The um, by the way, the watchtowers are now um, open. There's no you don't have to fight for them. You just have to be the last one to be there, and then you can sort of see anything from them. Uh, that's a shame that we are where we are. <laughs> Let's just go back in and do this one. Move these in. So that one's going to finish. What we might do is well, I think we'll end a turn and then we'll just see what this 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 can then open up all sorts of problems for us potentially or it could open up um, good things we just don't really know at this stage yep there we go so we actually found a little bit of extra stuff in there that's a bit of um, a, a, a bit of mana so 43 mana uh, this one here there's no cost to um, to do this, by the way. So we're sort of now opening this area up. Let's go back in now and, and channel this one through. Um, so that one's going to be okay. Now we don't know what's in this side. Let's just go and start to move down. They they start off asleep, and then become more powerful over time. So let's just keep on seeing what we've actually got in here. We don't know. A small monster den. Okay, so we've got small monsters. That we do need to um, need to sort of look out for. Let's move that one across and move this one in. And we can now annex our first uh, our first province. I think I might leave it here so we can then do this in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and then I can explain. There's a bit to explain about what to look for, how it all works, so on and so forth. I'll catch you next time.